Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for following along on my journey. I got a pen a few days ago. It arrived within three weeks. There's been a lot of uh, challenges with shipments out of China. This was an eBay purchase, so it went by way of Orange Connect, and you can see it went through Illinois, and it was landed in Chicago. So the flight went from China, probably Shanghai, to Chicago. And it was less than three weeks, 20 days from order to delivery. So in today's world, that's pretty good. We can see designation. We'll see what that translates into. We flip it over, we'll find uh, some more identification. Again, we'll see what that translates into. So this sticker was probably put on the seller, the distributor. I haven't tried to remove it. Probably a nice logo underneath of it. The box slips out, and we have a very nice white box with Laura Lee embossed there in silver, which is always a nice thing. The top just comes off and we see a pretty pen with that tag on it, which is generally indicative of a higher cost pen. It's a Lingmo Lorelei. This uh, brand and model has been around for a while and this is, I don't know what permutation of the Lorelei, but it's certainly a little different. And this presentation box is quite nice. Nice uh, velour there. It's soft in the top of the box. But we don't buy boxes, we buy pens. We'll take the label off so we can take a look at this pen. And it is a pretty pen. I don't really have a red pen like this. It's a kind of a subtle pearlescence to the resin. Some transparency, you can see that converter in there. Screw off cap in less than one turn. What a nice design. And then we'll see what makes this really unique is that nib. I've not seen a nib like this come out of China. The feed's also a little different. That section is the same material as the pen. It fits well in the hand. That section's about as small as I like it. The pen is nice and girthy, but no weight to it. It's very, very light. And, as we would expect, it posts nicely, very securely. And it probably feels better. The weight, that increase in weight, I think, makes the pen a, a nicer writing experience. We unscrew and we'll find your typical converter, and there's that black that you saw through the barrel. But it's nice if that was clear. It looks like uh, Standard International, so I have a number of Standard International ones which are all clear, which I might replace this with that. And your standard nipple, and again, it looks like there could be a nib collar in there, nib assembly. We'll check that out when we look at the pen for disassembly. So overall my first impressions is it's pretty nice but this was on the expensive side. This is the eBay auction to buy it now price but I wanted to, to look at it for that nib. Uh, Wingsung also has a similar model which I've ordered which is at half the price. Here's what that auction looks like. So uh, we're going to clean this up, ink it up and see how that nib writes. I've disassembled the 691 as, as much as I'm going to disassemble it. The nib and feed pulled out very easily from the section. It looks like there could be a nib collar in there, but it didn't unscrew easily. So we're just going to leave it as that. The main thing is being able to pull out the nib and feed, and that certainly is an interesting looking nib. And it's also an interesting looking feed. That's not like any other feed I've ever seen. So they've certainly done an effort to make a feed that might be a good feed to work with this nib. 
which uh, looks like it could have some interesting softness to it. Not a lot, but a little. He has a elongated breather hole in that big B. So when we ink this up, it's going to be fun to see how that works. As we look inside the cap, we'll see that cap liner in there, which is nice. Yeah, they didn't machine something in there, they just put a liner in, which is probably good considering how that clip is probably attached. So that uh, liner might serve two purposes. Keep that clip in place and also keep the nib from drying out. As we play the LED light, we'll notice the pearlescence that it's in that resin. So it's a red version of a resin. Um, that we've seen on other pens, but I've never quite seen this color in other pens. It has the same amount of swirls in it. You know, it has a little bit of uh, translucency. Interesting resin. I like it. Something different. I did a very nice job in designing this clip. Yeah, it's a kind of nice sculptured shape to it. Nice teardrop at the end. And then they just put a little knob at that end. So you got a pretty decent space here for some thick fabric, if that's what you're going to use it on. It's on the stiff side, but it is flexible. So it should go over, you know, a jeans pocket or whatever, and it will also fit in a nice thin shirt. So we're going to give them kudos on that clip design. Well, I've inked the pen up and I've been writing with it. So we're ready to discuss that part of the pen. The first ink I put in here was a pen BBS ink that I had received, which was color similar to Apache Sunset, kind of a yellowish orange, which I thought would work well with the pen. It did not work well. The ink um, really didn't flow like I expected it to. So I was very disappointed. <clears throat> so I emptied it out and I decided on a Noodler's Burgundy, which I think does the job. It's, it's extremely more saturated and it certainly works better with this nib than the Pen BBS ink, which I, I had a feeling there would be some issues with that ink and I tried it anyways. And I was correct, there were some issues. So we'll let Mr. Crab uh, go off and take a break. And we'll just take a look at this pen again. I didn't change the converter, so you can still see that black top of the converter there. I like the pen sitting right here. I think it's great that it uncaps in less than one turn. I think it, it's great that it posts well. We'll give you the weights. We'll give you the lengths. And we'll give you the dimensions of that section so you can put everything in perspective. And the pen does look good in the hand. It's a nice color of red. I certainly appreciate it. You can see the black <clears throat> Uh, section insert that holds the nib and feed so the resin is definitely translucent as we saw from the LED. I think we need to discuss this nib in a little bit more detail. So I decided to use these three other nibs to discuss the visual aspects of this nib on the L'Oreal. Unique breather hole here extremely long tines because you really got to measure it from the bottom of the breather hole all the way to the end of the pen. As you can see, these are much shorter. Here's a Pen BBS uh, nib out of the 492. Here's a Moonman nib in the M8. And here's just a generic Waterman's number two vintage nib. And it's there because we're going to look at that, the writing part of this video. I think whatever they've done to this design was supposed to emulate something to do with a softer nib, maybe a nib that has some flex to it. These two nibs don't 
advertise that nor pretend to be that nor look like it. And the Waterman's nib is also fairly generic in how it looks. The other aspect of the nib and feed design is how they've really cut this feed, which is generally what you want to do because if you're flexing this pen while writing, this uh, end of the nib is going to bend up and you can drag that feed on the paper. Here they've done a very good job of keeping that away. Not so much here on Pen BBS on the Moon Man. And with the Waterman you have that classic spoon feed which is also very thin and gives you a lot of latitude if you're going to be pushing the nib and, and flexing it while you write. As they seem to roll around in that magnet in the 492 doesn't help keep things in, in the right spot. So definitely they did a change to the nib, they did a change to the feed, which would make one to believe that this nib is one that you can push. And so here's the uh, paper towel that I used to wipe off the nibs after filling the 691. And here's the original ink that I put in. As you can see, it's really a lighter orange color. And here's the burgundy, which is in there now that I find works much better with the pen than the Pen BBS ink did. This is the Noodler's Burgundy. So here's my first examples of trying to write with the pen. The orange here is the Pen BBS ink. As you can see, it just didn't lay, lay down a consistent line. And then when I switched to the Noodler's Burgundy, down a more solid line. And obviously, so you can see where I pushed the nib a little bit here and there. Thought it'd be good just to take a quick look at this ink. It's a Noodler's Burgundy. That's pH neutral. Nice catfish on the label. The color card shows it to be a really nice dark pink, I would call it. <clears throat> you know, it doesn't have a lot of shading or sheen to it, but just a nice consistent color. And if we look at the chromatography, we'll see the same thing. It's fairly consistent. There appears to be maybe a little purple here at the very top. Yeah, maybe a few other colors in there, but still nice. No water resistance, which is none was expected. So overall, the, the pen is okay, but it's to me, it's not representative of the price. And I knew there was going to be a little bit of an uplift to the nib. And let's see how that nib writes and if it's actually worth the extra money. When I first put this nib on paper with the pen BBS ink in it and first tried to write with it, it was very scratchy. It's not smooth now, but it's probably about what you would expect with a, a nib that's this fine. And I would say it's definitely an extra fine nib. And with very little pressure, it just lays down a very thin line. You know, no pressure. If you put on more pressure, it opens up a little bit. But it's certainly not something that you could do on a regular basis in, in my mind. It does have a little bit of bounce to it, which I always like. But I think it's uh, too much feedback. Now, this is Fabiano paper, which has some texture too, and it's not quite as smooth. So I went to Tomo River Paper, and it definitely feels smoother on Tomo River. So this nib is going to be sensitive to the type of paper. And again, another example of uh, an extra fine nib, and of course my writing deteriorates when you're trying to hold paper and be over the camera, but hopefully the idea comes across. So at the end of the day, we're going to rate this pen. 
and I'm going to give it an 8.4. I don't give it any checks. Well, we'll give it one check for the look and, and basic design, that minimalistic design, nice rounded ends, feels good in the hand. But the writing, I think, is, is not acceptable for almost anybody. I'm going to do some smoothing on, on that nib, and I'm certain that I'll, I'll reduce the feedback a little bit, but it's still going to stay extremely fine. Um, I can't recommend this pen. I know I don't do that very often, but you could probably stick other nibs in here because it looks like a standard number six would work. But for the price of the pen, just buying it for a nib holder, I don't think is a is value. So I had shown this uh, Waterman's nib when we were looking at different nibs. And I just wanted to just give you a comparison so you could put it in perspective. So this is no pressure. And this is less less pressure than I put on the, Laure, the Lorelei nib. I mean, this just is so effortless, so nice. And this is why you can't compare modern flex to vintage flex, at least from this example. Um, and this is a small nib. It, those tines are not as long as they are. It's not as thin, but it works well. And it's not that this is a gold nib. It's just that the steel that they used for that Lorelei nib it just doesn't have the softness to it, which I'm certain they did on purpose because it may more be easily sprung and they didn't want to do that. So here's the comparison between these two nibs. So uh, we've reached the end, so thank you for watching. May you have many great pen experiences and find a pen that you love to write with, draw with, doodle with. It's fun to put your thoughts on paper in, in whatever form that's appropriate and share it. Be safe, be healthy, and most importantly, be happy. So we're going to say bye for now. And you can see how fine that is and it does occasionally skip. It seems to dry out a little bit more quickly, but then that distance from that feed to the end of the nib is quite a lot. So you got a lot of ink exposed to air and that's not unexpected. Once it starts flowing, it works well. Bye. After uh, previewing the video, I decided I needed to pull that nib and reinsert it so the nib is a little bit deeper in the section and there's less of a distance between the end of the feed and the end of the nib. And I think that's exactly where it belongs. So I think it's in good shape. It's still right scratchy. It just writes with a little bit wetter writing, which is what you would expect when that feed is closer to the end of the nib and it probably won't dry out as quickly. Another afterward, I have done my work on this nib and it was a lot of effort and work. Hopefully it's coming across in the video. Those tines are not the same thickness. The one on the upper side to the right is a little thinner than the one to the left. The tines were not aligned and I did a lot of effort to align them. I did a lot of grinding. I did a lot of flossing. The nib is still not what I would consider to be a great nib, but it is better. We'll show you a quick example of how it writes now. We're going to try to write the same thing above here. It's definitely smoother. There's still a fair amount of feedback, but I think that's the nature of the nib. But it does lay down a lot more ink now. It's more consistent in its writing. It's never going to be a flex monster or even more than anything but a little bit of a soft nib. You know, that's the nature of this design. So it's, it's not going to be a pen I'm going to reach for when I want to have some expressive writing. As an everyday writer, it might work. So we're going to say bye again and bye again. Bye again.